What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Alex here and today I want to show you guys some more really cool galaxy tips and tricks that a lot of people don't know about. And the first one is that you can change the way your background applications look. So if you look at mine, my layout here is probably different than what you have on your Galaxy phone and it's actually really reminiscent of what the background applications look like on the iPhone. So you can see if I go to the background apps on my iPhone, I've set it up on my Galaxy to be very similar to the way it is on the iPhone and I really like this a lot more than the stock feeling on these phones. Now, if you want to set this up for yourself as well, all you need to do is go to your Galaxy store and look for the Good Lock application and install it on your phone. Once you have it, open it up and go to the makeup section and look for the home up module. Then in here, go to task changer. And then here you'll see a layout type with all of these different layout options. So you can go through here and choose whichever one you like. We have list, grid, stack, which is the one I prefer, vertical list, and then the slim list, which I also really like as well because it condenses everything really small and you can see all of your background applications right there. So just go through here and select whichever one you want. I personally like stack the most. And then another thing in here that I also change is if you go down to app label, this is the disabled by default and you can see in the background apps, it removes the app labels next to the icons, but I prefer to have that on. I just like the way it looks a little bit more and you can see when you enable it, you can see the actual names of the applications. And then if you scroll down a little bit more, there's this recommended apps section. This is enabled by default. And you can see if you go in here that it'll show you recommended apps down here. Now, I personally never use these and I don't really like how it looks. It makes it a little bit more cluttered. So I just go ahead and disable this. And now you can see that everything looks a lot more clean. All right, guys. Now, the next tip is that you can snooze your notifications. So if you ever get a missed call or a text message or an email and you can't get to it right now, but you need to be reminded about it later, instead of getting rid of the notification out of here and then forgetting about it or having you get lost in all of your other notifications, what you can do is snooze it and then get reminded about it later. So you can see I have this little bell icon right here and I can snooze this notification and be reminded about it again in 15 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour or two hours. And then you can select whichever one you want. Maybe we want to be reminded in 15 minutes, tap save. And now that notification will come back to us in 15 minutes, which is really convenient. So you don't end up forgetting about any notifications that you need to reply to. And to set it up, all you gotta do is go to your phone's settings, go to notifications, tap on advanced settings. And then down here, you'll have this toggle to show snooze button. So this is disabled by default. Go ahead and enable it. And now when you swipe down on your notifications, you'll see that little snooze button so that you can snooze your notifications and get back to them at a later time. Now for this next tip, I just learned about this recently and I think it is really convenient for those of us who use incognito mode on Chrome, whether you're logging into different accounts or you're doing whatever it is that you do online, I'm not judging. But one thing you might not know is that you can actually lock your incognito mode. So if you accidentally forget to close it, someone else might come by and be able to go to your browser and see everything you've been doing in incognito mode. And if you want to prevent that, you can actually lock your incognito mode with your fingerprint. And to do this, simply go to your URL bar right here and type chrome colon forward slash forward slash flags. Then in the search bar here, just look for reauthenticate. So type that and then you'll see an option here that says enable device reauthentication for incognito. Tap on the drive, drop down and select enable and relaunch your Chrome browser. All right, and now what you wanna do is hit on these three dots up here, go down to settings, go down to privacy and security, and you'll see a new option here that says lock incognito tabs when you leave Chrome. So we're gonna enable this and it's going to ask us to verify using our pin face ID or fingerprint. So we'll just authenticate with our fingerprint. And now what's gonna happen is when we go back to Chrome, let's open up another incognito window. Let's go somewhere, we'll just Google something, we'll type test. Now watch what happens when we exit Chrome, if somebody comes along and they go back into our Chrome profile, they will not be able to access our incognito tab in case we forgot to close it. So we have to unlock incognito. And of course, we're going to need to provide our pin or fingerprint to be able to access that incognito tab. Super, super useful feature that I never knew about and could definitely come in handy for those of us who use incognito, but often forget to close the incognito tabs. All right, guys, now this next Galaxy feature is really, really 
really useful. I really love this one and it's really helpful if you want to limit just how much you're using your phone throughout the day or what applications you're spending too much time on. So maybe you spend a lot of time on social media or you just use your phone too much you can control all that and give yourself limits on how often or how much you can use certain applications. So to do this, if you go to your phone settings and then scroll down until you see digital well-being and parental controls, in here, you'll get a nice dashboard that will show you everything you've done for the day. So you can see that I've used my phone for a little bit over an hour and a half. And these are the applications where I've spent most of my time. So Reddit, this game and Instagram and you can see just how many minutes I've used all of these applications and what's really cool is you can even set a screen time goal so if you go into here you can see I've set a four hour screen time goal for myself I don't want to be on my phone for more than four hours on any given day and then what's really awesome is they give you this nice little historical data right here where you can go and see just how well you've done with your goals and you can even set app timers for certain applications so you can see I have a game here where I've set a limit for myself for 25 minutes. So every day I'm only allowed to play this game for 25 minutes. And if you ever want to set any other timers for any other applications for yourself, just up, tap onto here, go to the, this plus icon and then select any application that you want from here. So let's say maybe YouTube music, we're gonna set a timer for this. We're gonna set this timer for every single day of the week. And maybe we only want to use this application for five minutes out of the day, tap done. And then when you go back, you can see it will show you just how much time you have left. And there's also a nice little summary up here. If you hit on these bars, it will actually show you how well you're doing. So you can see that my daily average screen time is three hours and 18 minutes for this week. And it will even compare it against last week. So you can see I'm using my phone more this week than I did last week. Then you'll also get uh, this little, these little bars down here just to show you how you're doing. So it's definitely a really awesome application if you just want to get an idea of how much time you're spending using your phone and what applications are taking up most of your time. All right, guys, now when it comes to this last Galaxy tip, I can't believe that I haven't known about this before. I just recently learned about it and it is so convenient. So if you're ever watching a YouTube video and you need to fast forward or go backwards, what you probably do is double tap to go forward and you can see that it skips 10 seconds. If you ever wanna go back, you double tap on the other side and it goes back back 10 seconds but what if you want to go back or forward just a few seconds or maybe you don't really know what you're skipping to you can't really tell what's next it is a little bit inconvenient so here is where the magic is if you instead tap and hold on the progress bar and pull up you can see that you get this whole entire track list and you can just scrub through by a couple of seconds either way backwards or forward and go exactly to where you want to do and you even get the whole entire timeline you can see exactly the pictures of what is going to be on screen to wherever you scrub to so it is such a better way to use youtube instead of just fast forwarding or skipping back 10 seconds at a time you don't know what you're skipping to or where you're going or you might skip too far this is just such a better way to use youtube i can't believe i never knew this it makes using the application so much better but there you go guys that's gonna do it for this video i hope you enjoyed if you did you know what to do be sure to leave a like subscribe for future videos to come and i'll see you in the next one Peace.